What's up fellow drivers, David here, and this is a really exciting day because this is going to be my first ever mod for the GTR. I'm going to be installing a front lip, replacing the OEM one, and this is something that I've been wanting to do ever since I got the GTR because I think for the front end of the GTR, it just kind of cuts off. It goes a little bit too straight down. So, uh, this, is, so this should be a really easy install, and uh, let's take a look at the new one. Uh, Alright, hopefully you guys can hear me now. Uh, this is a genuine veil side lip that came straight from Japan. And it took me a long time to find one that I actually really liked uh, because a lot of the ones commonly have a design that kind of like curves up in the middle or uh, doesn't come out at all in the middle and I wanted one that had that sort of classic uh, wedge shape to it. And I also wanted one that was carbon fiber, not any other material. So. Uh, veil side got the job done. I got it imported straight from Japan. Really excited about it. Let's take a look at how to get the original one off. So the GTR has a center jacking point up front, uh, but I don't have a jack that's long enough to get under there to reach it. And I also don't have ramps that are low enough to be able to drive over it. So I actually have a jack on this side and a jack on this side because it has two jacking points that you can find if you look underneath it and I'm gonna have to jack it up on both sides simultaneously. And quick safety reminder, always use wheel chocks. All right, so the car is up on the jacks now and we've got some blocks on each side in case anything bad happens. So let's take a look underneath it. So there's a few different types of things that you'll need to remove under here. One of them is these rubber cover things. And the way that you can get rid of them is simply by grabbing the edge of them and just pull it out. And then you'll see that there is a bolt underneath it. The other thing you'll need to remove are these little push pin things. So you can see here I have one removed. I have it out here on the ground. It's sort of two pieces. And what you'll need to do is pry under this one and pop it out. And then once it gets out, then use something to pry under the bigger edge and pop it out. I have this little tool that fits right around it, which is really handy, but if you have to, you can use a flathead screwdriver or try and use your fingers, but I wouldn't really recommend that. Okay, so I have all the little plastic covers and push pins out, and I just tested some different sockets, and it looks like some of the bolts are gonna be 12 millimeter, and then some of them are going to be 10 millimeter. Okay, I think I have one more bolt to go. I just have a 12 millimeter left. Hopefully it doesn't fall on my face. So actually, I'm gonna stand up out here or crouch down and do it. And I'm gonna keep this cardboard under it so if it falls, it doesn't just scrape things up. Hmm, okay. Well, it's still on there. So we either have another bolt or I'll have to kind of pull it off. Okay, so it looks like the ones that I was missing is actually up here. So what I had to do was kind of peel back the fender liner a little bit to get to that bolt that you can see there. Now to actually remove it, hopefully you guys can see this with the camera, I have to put an extension on and then reach up from the bottom. <laughs> you can see like a lot of dirt and stuff probably will fall out of here. Uh, when I first did it, just like a bunch of crap fell out. But anyway, uh, that one's going to be a little bit harder to get to, but I just need to keep this pulled back, put a six inch extension on it, and then reach up. Oh shit. Okay. Last bolt out. Here are both of them laying side by side. You can see the original one down here of course and there was like a bunch of dirt and stuff I still have a couple leaves and things um, but you know stuff just gets caught up in there from the road and uh, here's the new one up here actually I was about to put it back on and then I realized 
why don't I weigh this? I should see how much weight difference there was. And when I bought this one, I wasn't even thinking really about uh, weight reduction. You know, I was just thinking it'll be a great cosmetic upgrade and maybe I'll get some, you know, slight arrow advantage. But, you know, really just it was for looks. But there's probably some real weight advantages because when I took this one off uh, and picked it up, it was a lot heavier than I was expecting. So the scale says about 13 and a half pounds, 13.5. So let's see what the veil side one is. And the new carbon fiber veil side one is, oh, look at that, only 10 and a half pounds. So this is actually three pounds lighter, which frankly, I mean, three pounds isn't all that much, right? But uh, relatively speaking, when you're talking about something that was only 13 and a half pounds uh, to begin with, having something that was three pounds lighter is pretty significant. So, hey, weight reduction. Another thing that I actually forgot to mention, but that uh, you might want to consider if you're doing this yourself, I actually laid out all of the rubber uh, plugs and clips and all of the bolts in the exact order and pattern that they were originally on the car. That way I can get each one going back in the same hole it came out of. All right, so as you can see, I laid down the packaging that was originally around it, just so when I'm trying to put it back on, it's probably gonna be sort of flopping around. I don't want it to hit the cement and uh, scrape things up. So uh, here we go. Okay, so I'm gonna put in these uh, 12 millimeter bolts first. I think that's probably gonna be the best way to go. Uh, honestly, uh, there's probably no real wrong way to do this, but uh, I think these two larger ones that are kind of in the middle, even though they're not the last ones that I took off, are probably the best ones to put on first and take off last. Um, but you'll know that now because you watch this video. So this bolt is probably the hardest bolt uh, to get back in because you have to kind of pull away the fender liner and then pull this part down while you're pushing up on this and lining everything up. It's kind of a headache, but um, yeah. Uh, this is probably the hardest one to do. So once we get this one all the way in and then the one on the other side, then we'll move to all the ones going all the way around the edge. Okay, so unfortunately there were some fitment issues, which honestly is kind of to be expected with pretty much any sort of body piece. Uh, I was hoping I'd get lucky, but not really. So um, getting in this screw uh, looks like it may require me to either remove the fender liner or the bumper or possibly cut a hole for me to be able to get to it. Hopefully don't have to do that. And then this one really isn't lining up. So it looks like we might have to do a little bit of grinding or cutting. Uh, but I'll give you an update in just a second. So what ended up needing to be done was actually re-drilling one of the holes on the corner. And we went with the right hand side here using this Dremel tool with this kind of end. Here you can see the actual hole and fortunately I didn't need to actually cut a lot of the fender liner or remove the whole bumper to get it to fit. Now it's back on and I need to pop the rest of all these things in for real this time. All right, we are done. All the bolts, all the little rubber things are in, down off the jacks, pulled up into the driveway here a little bit. And I think it looks great. So let's take a quick closer look. It just makes the whole front of the GTR look so much more aggressive. I think honestly, this is how it should have looked like from the factory. And I didn't want one that was like totally different. You know, I'm a fan of that sort of like OEM plus look, but there is actually one more thing that we need to do. I need to get this on there. All right, and we are done. That was a final touch. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Thank you so much as usual for watching. It is super hot out here. Also, quick thank you to my friend uh, who helped me out actually uh, grind this hole because um, he's a little camera shy so we just kept him off the camera but uh, thank you to him good luck if you do this on your own it's a pretty simple job uh, although you can run into some sort of obstacles you know uh, with some fitment and that is just just kind of how it is with these sort of things but overall I'd rate this one's fitment pretty high and uh, yeah I'd say you know give yourself maybe three hours to do this whole thing time to go take it out and show it off